ein Focke Wulf auf Klärer mit Doppelrum. Hey everybody, welcome back to Trey's Models. Today we're going to be doing the 148 scale great wall kit of the FW189 Yuhu. And yes, I did have to look up how to pronounce that. It uh, loosely translates to Eagle Owl. This was a twin boom designed by Kurt Tank in response to a requirement by the RLM for a observation aircraft. And it won out against the uh, other aircraft that were competing against it. A total of 864 were produced from 1940 to 1944. Now the first flight for the prototype was July 1938 and it was introduced to frontline units right around August 1941. And as usual with most aircraft kits, I'm going to start off in the office. It's uh, typical RLM colors. Used, uh, I used enamels, uh, mostly testers, and then um, some water-based washes to make it pop a little bit. Okay, so modding this kit from the uh, A1 version into a field modded one that was equipped with uh, radar. In this case, the FUG 212 C-1 Lichtenstein. Now the kit didn't have that with it, so I had to scratch build the radar boxes. And it started out with just some simple boxes, added the detail, and then painted them up. Okay, so the FW189 has a unique instrument panel layout. And also because of the greenhouse, canopy setup you can really see inside there pretty good so I didn't want to just put a flat piece of plastic up there for the instrument panel because you can really see the back side of it so I used some stretch sprue of different diameters to replicate the back side of the gauges and then also used some stretch sprue to replicate the uh, wiring came back and painted the wiring yellow as most uh, German aircraft had yellow wiring the FW189 engines were inverted Argus V12 and the kit engines are actually really nicely detailed and you get some photo edge wiring harness with them. Um, again, all enamel uh, testers and some water-based washes made some of the details come back. And then I did come back with the dry brush and highlight some of the areas with a light gray and a, and a very, very little bit of light silver. Um, I was doing one engine closed and one engine open so I had to remove some ejector pin marks on one set of cowlings uh, on the inside. It was a little bit of a pain, but not too hateful. All in all, so it's a really nice uh, detail on the engines. Okay, so with the engines out of the way, we can start working on the main parts of the fuselage and tail booms and starting to add the canopies on there. You can really see where that instrument panel detail pays off because you can really see it from the outside. So that was extra work that was worth doing. The gaps and everything are pretty much non-existent and very little filler needed. The fit on it was awesome. And the booms and the tail section lined up really well, which is a big problem on some twin boom kits that I've built in the past, getting everything lined correctly. What's really other a nice touch on this kit is that it comes with masks that are numbered. So that makes life a lot easier than having to cut out the individual mask. Some of them did not quite fit correctly, so you do have to come back with a really sharp blade and uh, make some corrections. I did have to add some tiny pieces of Tamiya tape here and there just to fill in a couple little spots. But all in all, the mask that come with the kit is it's usable. It, it works. And on to the basic painting. Um, I usually don't prime my uh, models, but on this one, I went ahead and put a light coat of gray primer on it just to get everything a nice base color. And then uh, came in and, and painted the underside with the RLM 76. And then the top side got some pre-shading. I, I pre-shaded the bottom as well. I did the top and then came back in and did some uh, splinter camo. Okay, on to the landing gear. And this is a really nice part of the kit. Um, very little cleanup on the parts. Everything went together very nicely. Um, what was unique about the FW189 was the tail wheel actually folded up sideways inside the vertical horizontal tab. I thought that was kind of a neat little uh, design feature that Kurt Tank came up with. 
But um, the landing gear, um, it did come with a uh, weighted wheels, which was kind of a nice touch. And uh, really not much to uh, struggle with. It uh, went together really well. Okay, so one of the unique features of this aircraft being modified as a night fighter was the Shrog Music Cannon. And what they did was took a 20 millimeter cannon, mounted it obliquely so it fired upward. And also, forgot to mention that we had to put in the boom for the FUG radar out front. And you can see the mod going in between the pilot seat and the observer seat here in this picture. But um, that was a unique feature with this particular field modified aircraft. Okay, so the basic build is done. I'm gonna come back and doing the outer weathering. Um, mostly done with pastels after I had sealed it down with some testers dull coat. Um, the thing about pastels when you put them on and then you put another dull coat over the top of them, you're gonna dull them down. They're not gonna be as visible. So in my experience, you need to go a little heavier than you think you need to with the pastels because you're gonna lose some of it when you hit it with that final dull coat. Um, also came back with that uh, camo is a lightened up RLM 76 that I did the splotches on the top with. And the chipping on the front was done with some silver and some sponge that I cut into little pieces, try to make it look more authentic. Okay, so far along in this build, we've discussed how we've modified it, but we really haven't touched on why. Um, from what I can understand, this aircraft was modified to meet a need on the uh, Russian front to fight against a all-woman aviation unit known as the Night Witches. And they were the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, later known as the, the 46th Taman Guards, if I'm saying that right. If I butchered that, I apologize. But uh, picture, if you will, a Russian PO2. It was basically an ancient biplane. Uh, that's what these Russian female aviators were flying and they would fly at night obviously they were called the night witches for a reason and they would do harassment raids against the German units now most of the German night fighters at the time ie the uh, BF 110 the JU 88 and the even heavier wing loading DO 217 just couldn't fly slow enough to engage these targets so what they did is a field mod was modify the FW-189 to go after the Night Witches. That's my understanding. Um, from what I can gather, NJG-100 and possibly NJG-5 operated a few of these aircraft. There weren't that many of them. But um, if you want to know more about the Night Witches, it's worth diving into. You can Google them. Um, they were some brave fighters for the Russians, for sure. The specs on the FW-189 are as follows. The length was 39 foot or 11.9 meters, with a wingspan of 60.7 feet or 18.5 meters. Had an empty weight of 5,952 pounds or 2,700 kilograms, and a max takeoff weight of 8,818 pounds or 4,000 kilograms. It was powered by two Argus AS 410 A-1 inverted air-cooled V12 engines developing 465 horsepower each. The max speed was 214 miles per hour, 186 knots. It reached a ceiling of 22,966 feet or 7,000 meters. Had a range of 584 miles or 940 kilometers. Standard armament was two 7.92 millimeter machine guns fixed in each wing route and one 7.92 machine gun in the tail cone. And of course, with the Shrog music, it was the 20 millimeter oblique loop iron cannon.
Well, thanks for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe. And I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Y'all be good to each other and we'll see you on the next one.